Hi, today I'm going to be going over a backlight fuser placement, but I'm not going to be using the hot air station. This was sent in by another store, and one of the comments I get from a lot of places is, I would love to do this, I'd love to replace those components, but I don't have what I need, I don't have a hot air station. And hot air stations cost a lot of money, so I don't want to do this because a hot air station is going to be a big investment, and that's just not something that I want to do. Well, I did a video with my crappy old JVC Everio $100 camcorder, where I showed you how you can replace a backlight fuse with a $10 soldering iron. Here I'm going to be using a bit more of an expensive soldering iron to do the job, but the same principle is going to apply that I'm going to replace that backlight fuse without actually using the hot air station because it's just something that you should know how to do. So this is a board that again has nothing wrong with it besides two things. A, bad backlight fuse, and B, idiot didn't plug in the microscope before switching over to the microscope on open broadcaster. So the microscope should boot up in a second. There we go. It's going to blink a little bit because that's what cheap Chinese hardware, uh, capture hardware does. And that there with a the little P on it is our fuse. Let me just adjust the color here so that we have a sexy looking backlight fuse there. That's our sexy looking backlight fuse. I'm going to turn on the air filter because it's very important to me that when I solder that I not be inhaling flux and other garbage. I value my health. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put some flux on that fuse. This is Amtec 559 and I have this little nice syringe for it. And that's going to make it a little bit easier for that solder to flow and melt. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take a bunch of solder and put it over there and I, I'm gonna kind of have it like a nice little you know, vat of solder so the whole idea here is I, I want to kind of melt that off of the board I want to heat it up but I don't want to heat up all the components around it so once it's really melted what I do is I just go I touch the component and I try to get my iron to touch both ends of it like that and then I just take it right off of the board now also I don't like the idea that there is mi mixture of leaded and lead free solder on there because that's not good so I'm going to try to suck up all of the lead-free crap like that. Now I have leaded on there, but that's not good enough. I actually want to get rid of the solder on one of the pads there, and I'll show you why. So the first thing I'm going to do... Let's get my goot wick. And I'm going to make one of those pads empty. So one of those pads will have no solder on it at all. See, nice and empty. Now I need to find a fuse. Now the irony is I actually forgot to buy fuses, so I'm going to take one off of another motherboard. This is going to be fun, because I was expecting to have one pre-available and to make life easy. But why would life be easy? Okay, so we're, that's the old junk fuse, so we're going to take a fuse off of this board using the same concept with a general iron. I'm Again, I don't have hot tweezers. This is a, even though I'm using a 200 something dollar station for this, you can easily replicate this process with a much cheaper station. So what I'm gonna do now is do the same thing. A big solder ball above there. The flux is gonna help that lead-free solder on there flow. And eventually I'm just gonna grab it with the tweezers once it's hot. And this ain't exactly the best way to do any of this. I'm just trying to show you how to do it if you don't have the tools to do it right. Because realistically speaking, when you start out, you're probably not going to have the nicest tools to do all this work. So you're going to have to kind of jerry-rig it a little. And that's understandable. You don't start off with a $650 rework station. You don't start off with a $7,000 BGA machine. You don't start off with a lot of this stuff. All you start out with is the desire to fix and the desire to learn, hopefully. So that's my new fuse. So now what I'm going to do, see how this pad is flat? What I'm going to do here is I'm going to slide it in on one side. Now remember, with this iron, this isn't hot tweezers. This is a basic soldering iron. I can only heat one end at a time. So the first thing I got to do now is actually find the fuse that flew away when I flicked it. So let me find it. Uh. 
All right, where are you? Here, little fuse. Here, little fuse. Come here. Good little fuse. Good little fuse. I'm sorry, I have to burn you one more time. Okay, so I'm going to move this over. Pick it up. I'm going to try to pick it up so that I don't... The thing is, you don't want the leg of the tweezer extending past the fuse because then you won't be able to press it flush on the board. You want to kind of pick it up where the... The, you could, the tweezers are not going further than the fuse. So, so I put some flux there. Now I'm going to melt one pad, and then I'm going to put it on there. You understand where I'm going with this? All right. Now, see, I'm, see, I'm going to melt the solder, and then I slide the fuse in. Because my hands suck, I did a terrible job at that. So let's do this. Remember, the whole idea with soldering is you want to heat both. The solder is going to flow to the heat source. I want the solder to flow to both the fuse and the pad, because I'm trying to solder the fuse to the pad. I don't want a cold joint. I don't want the solder to only flow to the pad and not hit the fuse. So I kind of have it touch both, right? Now there's the other side that we got to worry about. The other side, there's no solder on it. Well, we're about to fix that. So now we have it perfectly flat on the board on one side, which makes it easier to solder it on the other. So I'm just going to get some flux on that end. I'm going to get some flux on the end of my solder here, so that when I make the joint, it'll just flow. Nice and fresh. Nice and fresh. Come on. Okay, you want to make me look like an idiot because we're on the internet. I get it. You don't want to flow just because we're going to get you to flow. You're going to flow whether you like it or not, mofo. You're going to... So this little uh, Hackle 599B thing has gotten to the point where it's actually more dirty when I take the iron out of it than when I entered the iron into it originally. See, the problem here is I'm not actually getting to the pad. That iron is not touching the pad, and it's not heating it. That's why the solder is not sticking to it. So what I could do here is I could just use a different tip. And even if you can't afford the hot air rework station, even if you don't got the 700 bucks to drop, you can probably drop 10 or 15 bucks on a tip, at least if you want to make money. So now we're going to use the chisel tip here. Try to do the same thing and see if this one allows me to get really down on, the, on that fuse. Now, you could say blow away that flux with hot air, but I don't have hot air, remember? Wink, wink. Can't turn the hot air station on. And it's flowed. Very nice. Now we're going to check and see if we have a short to ground on backlight output before I plug a screen in. So again, the fuse had a blow for a reason. It blew because there was a short to ground at one period in time. So I'm going to use my multimeter. We're going to put it in diode mode here. I'm going to take the red probe, the positive one, and put it on ground, and the black probe and put it on pin 38, 39, and 40, which is where the backlight is. And I have a number of 0.523, which is perfectly in line with what I expect to see on a board that has an LP8550 uh, backlight LED driver. So let's plug a screen in and see if it's good. I also forgot to check and see if that fuse had continuity. So one of the things to remember is that a fuse is a device that's going to blow if it has too much energy passed through it. Energy is heat. So if it has too much heat, it will blow. You know what else has heat? Soldering iron with a solder blob that you're putting right over the fuse. And it works. As you can see here, I do have a light on my screen, which means that I fixed it. And again, even if you don't have a hot air station, even if you have no hot air at all, you, you can fix this problem. You can fix this problem just by using um, a regular soldering iron. It just, you know, it just takes a little bit of ingenuity. It's a bit of a pain in the ass. What do you think I was doing before I had an FR801? I didn't always have an FR801. I didn't always have a flamethrower that cost 650 bucks. There was a time when 650 bucks was, you know, damn, that's, I'm going to fuck up my life if I spend 650 bucks on one tool. I always used to follow this rule with tools. Of uh, the, the rule that I would follow is I'm not going to buy a tool that I can't make the money back on within a month. So if I can't make the money back on my tool within a month, I'm not going to buy it. It was really important for me to have that, that rule because, again, you know, m the end of the month, that's when you got to pay rent. That's when you got to pay for your electricity. So if I spend my money that I would have spent on rent and I can't make that back, I'm kind of screwed. And I've never really wanted to be screwed. So 
that's that. And I hope you learned something.